Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart. Welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Wednesday, the 7th day of February 2024. And as always, we're going to bring you some stories in the news that have something to do with what the Bible has to say the world will be like at the time of the end. And today we have four extremely important stories. Now, if you're new to breaking news, and so many people are, we have people signing up all the time and subscribing to our channel. We need to make the point that we just don't do news stories and then move on. We explain the stories in light of what the Bible has to say the world will be like at the time of the end. So in other words, we're a little bit different than just someone reading stories and going on to the next one. We explain what they mean, and we put you into a perspective of what Scripture says and where we're at with respect to last day's Bible prophecy. Now, along this line, what we've also been doing on the second program we do every day, it's called Your Bible Questions Answered. And we're in the midst of a four-part series on the Ezekiel 38-39 invasion We've done two episodes previously. On Monday, we answered the question, what are some of the disputes that Christians have with respect to understanding the Ezekiel 38-39 invasion? And we mentioned 13 specific disputes that Bible believers make with respect to how to interpret and understand this passage of, passage of Scripture. And then yesterday, what we did said, okay, if it's talking about a literal future invasion of Israel in the last days by a number of nations— when will it take place? When in God's program will it occur? And we listed 10 different options that Bible believers hold as to the timing of the Ezekiel 38, 39 invasion. Now, today, what we're going to do is list in more detail one of the 13 disputes, and that is literal interpretation of Scripture or taking it basically symbolically or not or ignoring it completely. Sadly, most of the Christians in the world, most of the churches in the world do not take Ezekiel 38, 39 as a literal prediction of last day's events that are going to take place. So it's rarely or hardly ever been taught in most of the churches in the world. So we're a minority here. We admit that. But the question is, why should we interpret literally? And what are the you know arguments against doing this? And we're going to talk about that today. But then tomorrow, what we're going to do is put to rest once and for all why it should be interpreted literally when we show, when we show very clearly that literal fulfillment has already happened in our day and age. We'll get to that tomorrow. But bottom line is we want you to understand in a wider context how this is the world is setting the stage for this to happen, which the scriptures do predict. All right, having said that, let's look at these four extremely important stories today, and they are huge. The first one is Hamas has finally came up with a counter proposal to a proposal that uh, U.S. and Israel had made earlier about how to have a ceasefire, a temporary ceasefire. Well, Hamas wants much more than that, and here's how it goes. Hamas, headline number one, proposes a three-stage ceasefire over 135 days with the end of the war. In other words, basically the war will end when the ceasefire starts, it end after 135 days. All right, so the proposal would see terrorists exchange remaining Israeli hostages they captured on October 7th for Palestinian prisoners. The reconstruction of Gaza would begin. Israeli forces would withdraw completely, and the bodies and the remains of the dead uh, would be exchanged in the last phase. So this is the plan that they have proposed. This is according to Reuters. It envisions three phases lasting 45 days each. Now let's look specifically at what they're proposing. According to the Hamas counterproposal, all Israeli women hostages, males under 19, the elderly and the sick, would be released during the first 45-day phase in exchange for the release of Palestinian women and children from Israeli jails. So it's going to take 45 days to release all the women hostages, the males under 19, and the elderly, and there will be an exchange for Palestinian women and children from the Israeli jails. Now, the second phase is the male hostages would be released in exchange for the Palestinian prisoners. By the end of the third phase, Hamas would expect the sides to have reached an agreement on the end of the war. Now, here's what's interesting. The group which governs Gaza said in an addendum to the proposal that for the second phase of the release, the Palestinian prisoners, they want 50. 1,500 Palestinian prisoners released in the second 45-day phase, a third of whom they will select among a list of Palestinians who have been handed life sentences by Israel for murder, 
which would include the participants in the October 7th a massacre. So they want these, you know, they want 1,500 people released, 500 murderers released during the second 45 days phase of this. And the truce would also increase the flow of food to Gaza. Uh, and then um, they could start rebuilding and start it all over again. That is Hamas's proposal or Hamas's demands. All right, that brings us to headline number two. Obviously, Hamas's, uh, the Israeli response, it's a non-starter. It, what Hamas just released about the hostage deal. Now, let me tell you what's sickening too. We heard this yesterday. This all came out yesterday after our uh, uh, broadcast. Joe Biden, he'd seen the framework and he said the deal is a little over the top. A little over the top. This just shows Biden's contempt for Israel. Now, what's sad is Anthony Blinken, as we're going to say, the Secretary of State has just arrived in Israel. He'll be meeting with the cabinet today be interesting to see what kind of pressure is put upon the United States, uh, will put upon Israel to end the war. So uh, the framework deal, a little over the top. Basically, Hamas submitted its response uh, today, Tuesday, and the, the uh, Israeli response, they haven't said anything public yet, but uh, the Khan Broadcasting Network, that's an Israeli broadcasting network, quoted an unnamed government source said that Israel would not accept any conditions for ending the war, which will enter its fifth month, by the way. Uh, it is entering the fifth month today. Netanyahu has repeatedly declared the war will not end without a total victory over Hamas. The meeting of Hamas's answer is a refusal to deal, a senior Israeli official was quoted as saying by Channel 12 News, and that's exactly right. They don't want a deal. This is a ridiculous deal. They want to drag it out as long as possible. And where we're at with the war, as we've mentioned, um, 18 of the 24 battalions of Hamas have been neutralized, according to Israel. There's one last area they need to get into, and that's called Rafah. That's near the farther, farther south, near the Egyptian border. There's some 200,000 Palestinians that are there, you know, refugees, and Hamas is there. The leaders are there, and, and this is the last section that needs to be taken care of. And then they'll have generally gone through the entire area of Hamas and, you know, neutralized their army and their leaders. But that still has to take place. But Hamas wants a ceasefire before that can happen and before these leaders can be destroyed. So, uh, Israel, of course, won't accept this ridiculous proposal, which Biden calls a little over the top. In other words, just stop fighting, free all the terrorist leaders in Hamas, let them go, uh, release 500 murderers from prison. Uh, Israel did this a number of years ago. There was a prisoner exchange for one Israeli prisoner. They gave over a thousand Hamas or, or Palestinians that were in the jails at that time. And amongst the ones released during that time that for this one Israeli soldier that had been taken captive, are the ones who were present day leaders of Hamas, the murderers that are there, that are still hiding in Gaza. So you just can't do something like this. Hostages, sadly to say, are casualties of war. You cannot give in to the demands unless you want untold thousands of people in the future killed if you go for this deal. So that is the first headline. Uh, they put the uh, proposal, they've released it to Israel. Israel, we're waiting for a response, but we know it's a non-starter. Now, there's another important story that came out yesterday after we finished the broadcast. Now, we've mentioned this in passing, but they actually confirmed the story. The IDF believes that one-fifth of the hostages are already dead. According to a paper, 32 families have been informed by the Israeli Defense Force. Their loved ones have been presumed either killed on October 7th or killed or died while they're in Gaza, with a possible another 20% uh, have also died. 20% of the hostages held in Gaza by Hamas are presumed dead, according to the report by the New York Times on Tuesday, quoting an Israeli intelligence report. The families of the 32 who are believed no longer to be alive were notified by the IDS, IDF. Furthermore, an additional 20 maybe also have been killed that are not confirmed they're still living. So we're going to We've gone from 132 hostages now to 80. Uh, so this is, uh, it's sad. But as we've said, we don't know how many are still alive, but it looks like as, as few as 80 of the original 132 that supposedly were still there are still with us. Again, this is a huge story that shows that these people have just, uh, you know, been killed or, or are being murdered right now by Hamas. It's a terrible story, but it's now being confirmed by the Israeli Defense Force. Now, there's a fourth hugely important story that has not gotten any airtime because of what's going on with Gaza today, with the uh, you know proposal and that. But this is huge also. 
Israel demands that Lebanon remove Hezbollah 20 miles from the border, and Beirut refuses to do this. All right, the Israeli military has issued a new assessment which estimates it has launched attacks on some 3,000 Hezbollah sites in Lebanon and in Syria since the war started on October the 7th. Uh, military spokesman said that while Israelis are not seeking a bigger war in Lebanon, it is certainly ready, and the IDF are ready to attack immediately if provoked. Now, here's the problem. Hamas is, or Hezbollah here has been hitting back on a daily basis. There's uh, some uh, untold number of people who have been removed. We talked about one village, Kirat Shmona, 23,000 people in the village. They're all gone. It's a ghost town because of the shelling going on. There's many people displaced from northern part of Israel because of the shelling from Hezbollah. And basic Israel's giving them an ultimatum. Move back 20 miles, 20 miles from the border, Hezbollah, your forces, as was agreed with in the ceasefire of 2006, which they've never done. Otherwise, it's going to lead to a bigger war. It's going to spiral into something bigger. If they don't move back 20 miles from the border, as per the longstanding agreement, Israel will make sure they do move back. And this will lead us to another front, another war in the northern part of the country right now. So while they're still fighting in the south, you've got now, um, you know, soon, like we mentioned the other day, 100% chance that something will break out in the north, a northern front. So Israel will continue fighting. So how do we summarize these four stories? The proposal by Hamas, the non-starter, according to Israeli government, the uh, fact that uh, as many as 50 of the 132 hostages have already died or, or have been dead since October 7th, and now what's going on in Lebanon uh, mm -hmm. will um, lead to another source of fighting going on, and Israel will be blamed for causing problems in the Middle East, for causing, uh, you know, the fomenting all this uh, fighting and, and hurting the uh, basically remember the economy of the world because the Houthis have to keep shooting at these ships in the Red Sea and stopping the flow of goods. So in other words, what we see is pre precisely what the Bible says. Israel has no peace whatsoever. They're getting fighting from every side. The world is against them. The United States is certainly not uh, backing them in any way, shape, or form. And so it's setting the stage, as we mentioned in our book, 25 Signs, we're near the end, that all these things are falling into place just as the Bible predicts. And so what we take away from this is another day of, uh, you know, obviously sad stories, heartbreaking stories, the lack of, you know, of 132 prisoners to be released, you know, maybe as many as 50 are already dead. The fact that Hamas is not serious about negotiating, the fact that the United States, and we'll see what Blinken does today with the Israeli leadership, what kind of demands the U.S. will make. Because remember, according to um, what's already happened in the past, one of, this, one of the leftist Israeli prime ministers, Ehud Barak, worked it out in such a way where Israel is totally dependent upon the U.S. for these uh, weapons they use, for the ammunition that they need to get uh, continue to get to uh, uh, fight Hamas. And uh, the U.S., we're told, has been threatened to slow down the flow or cut it off completely if Israel doesn't uh, you know, put some type of ceasefire in place. So we're going to see if that happens. So it's a terrible situation for Israel, but not surprising at all, according to what Holy Scripture says. So we'll keep you informed on this. So again, we uh, um, huge, huge headlines today, and if you can, please watch the broadcast today where we continue on talking about Ezekiel 38, 39, and all, all of this comes together, all of this fits with what the Bible has to say the world will be like at the time of the end. It's amazing how it's all fitting in, so take heart. God's in control. We know that. We keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus as we preach the gospel to the world that need to hear the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. Until later today, may the Lord richly, richly bless.